D A K E with the little R because R vitamin R is obviously not a vitamin, but vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K, and vitamin E are the fat soluble vitamins. And if you want to be a multi billion dollar rap artist, you better damn well take your fat soluble vitamins. So Drake is how we're going to remember this. So we're going to go through these one at a time in order, obviously skipping R because that's not a fat soluble vitamin. So let's start with the first vitamin, vitamin D. So with vitamin D, you basically need to know that its overall function in the body is to increase the level of calcium. Now it does this by acting on three different sites and conveniently the mnemonic is going to be the letter D. So the first one that you see here is that vitamin D increases the absorption of calcium in the distal renal tubule, right? So it increases the absorption of calcium. That's vitamin D's job. This is the first site where it does that in the distal renal tubule. The second site, which you see here again with the other red D and the red arrow, is that vitamin D increases the resorption of calcium in the duodenum. So, so far we have distal renal tubule and duodenum. Both of them conveniently begin with the letter D and that's where vitamin D has its action. The last one where vitamin D acts, which you see here kind of pointing to the bone in the hand is that it destroys bone. So destroy begins with D and destroy bone. That is to say that vitamin D activates osteoclasts and osteoclasts are bone resorption uh, cells. So bone resorption or destroying bone, therefore releasing calcium from the matrix of the bone. So vitamin D acts in the distal renal tubule, the duodenum, and it destroys bone. All of those things start with the letter D. Remember that with destroying bone, we're saying that vitamin D activates osteoclasts. And of course, osteoclasts are bone resorbers, okay? So that's how vitamin D increases calcium. It does it in three different areas. This is very high yield. You need to know all three of these. The next thing that you need to know is that there are different types of vitamin D, whether it's active, latent, where in the body it is. So let's pause for a second. So vitamin D, you obviously, everybody knows you, you get some from the sun. That's not really high yield, but it, you know, it shows up from time to time. You get it from the sun, you can get it from your diet, but the ability to move vitamin D throughout your body through different organs and changing its molecular type to activate it is really, really high yield. And for whatever reason, students really struggle with this. There's never been a good explanation for how you remember which chemical formula is active in which part of the body and where it's stored and where it's activated. So I'm going to demystify this right now. So vitamin D comes in two flavors. There's 25 hydroxy D3, and then there's one comma 25. And then in parentheses, it's two of the OH groups D3. Now these are two different forms of vitamin D, right? One is uh, where vitamin D gets stored, it's storage form. And the other is where it gets activated for peripheral use. So the 25 OHD3 is what you find in the liver. And that's mostly where it's stored. The 125 OH2D3, the other form of vitamin D, that's uh, in the kidney. And that's where vitamin D really gets activated to exert its utmost effect on calcium. So how do you remember which one's which, which one's active, and whether it's in the liver or the kidney? Well, the mnemonic here is O, the liver is where it lies, but the kidney is 125. O, the liver is where it lies, but the kidney is 125. So let's kind of go through this. So O, the liver is where it lies, tells us that the one with one O or one OH, the liver, it's in the liver, is where it lies, which is to say that's where it is stored, but the kidney is 125. So by the process of elimination, O, the liver is where it lies. So OH, the one with one OH in the liver, where it lies or where it's stored, but the kidney is 125. So in the kidney, it's the 125 version. And by process of elimination, since you know that O, the liver, so the liver is the one with the one OH, the one with the two OHs, that's 125, that's in the kidney. And because the liver is where it lies, the kidney is where it's active. So in the kidney, you get the activated form. So this mnemonic tells you everything you need to know about this seemingly confusing topic. And it's really not that bad, but it is super high yield because for whatever reason, examiners love to ask you which form of vitamin D you have in which organ, and whether it's a storage form, the activated form, all that crap. So know this, know this mnemonic, it will take you really, really far. Very briefly, not too much clinically to know about vitamin D. If you have a deficiency in vitamin D, it manifests as two different disease processes, de depending if you're a, a child or if you're a grown adult. So in children, it causes rickets. In adults, it causes osteomalacia. If you see a picture that looks like this with bowing of the knees, the answer is vitamin D deficiency. And I always remember that because the one bowing of the knee kind of looks like the part of the D that's curved. I don't know, maybe it doesn't to you, but it always did to me. So that's vitamin D. Remember the mnemonic and remember the different forms where it's active, where it's stored. And remember the three sites in the body where vitamin D exerts its effects. 
in the distal renal tubule, in the duodenum, and by destroying bone. Very easy to remember. Let's move on to vitamin A. So Drake is our rap superstar who takes his vitamins to stay healthy so he can do all his shows on the road. So D we did. There's obviously no vitamin R. So now we're on vitamin A. So vitamin A has some things that you need to know. And just like with vitamin D, we use the letter Ds. With vitamin A, we're going to use the letter As. So the first is that it's an antioxidant. And specifically, its antioxidant um, ability is manifested by it being used to treat measles and for it being used to treat retinitis pigmentosa. So it is an antioxidant, very useful in the treatment of measles and in the treatment of retinitis pigmentosa. Know that those are both very high yield facts. But vitamin A, first we start with A for antioxidant. Now we're gonna talk about A for aura. So aura, AKA the ability to see light. If you have a vitamin A deficiency, you get something called night blindness. So vitamin A helps us with our vision, specifically the ability to see light. So A for aura, A for antioxidant. The next thing is A for activation. So vitamin A causes epithelial cells to differentiate into various different cell subtypes. So A for activation, specifically for epithelial cells, differentiating. The last two things that I want to throw in by using the letter A is A for alopecia and A for abnormal pregnancy. So too much vitamin A, vitamin A in excess, can cause alopecia and it can cause abnormal pregnancy, which is to say that it causes birth defects. So you really have to make sure that you're taking the right amount of vitamin A uh, or else you can have adverse effects. So vitamin A for antioxidant, aura, the ability to see light, activation, epithelial cells differentiating, and too much vitamin A causes alopecia and birth defects, aka abnormal pregnancy. So that's vitamin A. Moving right along, Drake needs to keep taking his fat-soluble vitamins. He's taken vitamin D, there is no vitamin R. He's taken vitamin A, and now we're gonna talk about vitamin K. So keeping with our theme of using the letter in the vitamin K, there are three things that you need to know. One is that vitamin K is used to form clotting factors, specifically two, seven, nine, ten, protein C and protein S. So if you know anything about how Coumadin, aka Warfarin works, Warfarin or Coumadin, the, the, the same thing, the generic and the brand name, that drug inhibits factors 2, 9, 7, 10, protein C and protein S. So if vitamin K is used to make these clotting factors, then vitamin K gets crushed by warfarin. So the mechanism of warfarin is that it inhibits vitamin K's ability to make clotting factors. So super high yield. You need to know that. So vitamin K is in green leafy vegetables. Another really, really high yield fact. I always remember that vitamin K is in kale, K-A-L-E. Remember that it's in leafy vegetables. Remember that it's used to make clotting factors, 2, 7, 9, 10 CNS, and that it's crushed or inhibited by warfarin. Kind of going off that, it's really high yield to know the mechanism of how vitamin K is used to make these clotting factors. So vitamin K is a cofactor of gamma carboxylation. That is the mechanism with how it makes the clotting factors. So remember both of those things, they, they kind of go hand in hand. The last really, really high yield point to know about vitamin K is to know that vitamin K does not is not in breast milk. So when you have a newborn, if you're breastfeeding, the newborn's gonna need vitamin K, which is normally in the gut flora. So vitamin K is not made by the nipples. That's how I remember that. So I use the letter, the letter K with the N after it. So not made by the nipples. It's a clotting factor that's crushed by warfarin, and the mechanism is that it's a cofactor of gamma carboxylation. Very high yield points. Vitamin K is so high yield, people really underestimate how often it shows up on exams. Please know these facts. Moving right along, we're going to wrap up by talking about vitamin E. So remember, Drake takes his fat-soluble vitamins. Now we're talking about vitamin E. And vitamin E is the simplest vitamin to have to memorize of these four. There's the least amount of information about it. It doesn't show up too, too often. The only thing you need to know about vitamin E is that it's an antioxidant. So it's an antioxidant. Vitamin E is an antioxidant. Specifically, it prevents the peroxidation of fatty acids, so it is protective against arteriosclerosis. If you can remember these very, very minor points, you'll pretty much be able to answer any question that they throw at you concerning vitamin E. But guys, that's it. If you were able to follow along with this video, memorize the mnemonics, and everything made sense, then you are now a master of fat-soluble vitamins. Shout out to Drake.